All right, let's get started. Welcome to our study session. Um, City Manager Tammy, what do you have up for us tonight? Well, the first thing on our agenda is the reports of boards. And this, uh, this meeting tonight, we're going to have Joe Edwards from the Park Board. Please. Good to see you, Joe. Good to see you, too. I appreciate you coming to some of our meetings. Yeah. So um, I, I believe Jan um, has a handout. And what I'd like to do is just review 2020 and then talk about some other ideas that we have. Uh, if you have that handy, you can see in January 2020, we, we were clicking along with the winter and spring programs, um, the annual baby crawl, daddy-daughter dance. February, we got the chocolate festival in. And in March 2020, we got the, the kids trout fish out that had a really big crowd. And then we all know what happened in March of 2020, COVID mm -hmm. hit. So, um, you know, it, it affected everyone. It affected the city in general. It definitely affected the programs the park department had. Um, you know, staff was laid off. That happened everywhere. Um, the Taste of Yukon was canceled. Uh, all the facilities were closed. Uh, Mobile meals did keep operating and delivering meals, thank goodness. Uh, the senior games got postponed until September. Uh, Iron Thistle got postponed until uh, October, but in April we did get the splash pad open. <coughs> Festival of the Child was canceled. Uh, did have the community bike ride in May. And, <coughs> you know, we started trying to pick up a few things in June, but the Chisholm Trail Festival got postponed again. Um, we started doing Friday fun days and uh, they were held outside, they had fair crowds. Um, eventually we did start doing some concerts in the park later uh, in the summer. Uh, we did some summer camps, smaller classes were held. Attendance dropped everywhere. Uh, things were still pretty dicey in June. Uh, we were able to open City Pool in July, however, uh, we did not uh, open Kimball, and it's got its own issues, so that's another reason why it didn't open. Um, we did have a Veterans Tribute and the Freedom Fest. I was really proud of UConn for uh, going forward with that. We had a good crowd, everybody behaved, and you know, after three months of what the whole world went through, having just a, a little slice of Americana and normalcy was great. Um, started picking things up later in the year. Um, you can see that uh, we did have the Chisholm Trail Festival in October, uh, the Iron Thistle Festival, and then we did have Spooksville. And uh, if you've never gone and done judging on that, I suggest you give it a try because it's pretty <laughs> wild. Get a lot of side eye for that. Um, uh, the Mummy Sundance and the Spooky Senior Social were canceled. Uh, we did have the Patriot Project uh, in November uh, where Southwest Covenant comes out and uh, does a lot of work in our parks. We really appreciate that partnership. Uh, we did have the Pumpkin Harvest Craft Festival um, and uh, masks were required. Uh, Sounds of the Season was canceled. We did open Christmas in the park and we had, I think, record crowds. Uh, people are just ready to get out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they did cancel the Mayor's Christmas Party, but the essay contest was held. Uh, Spirit League didn't have their Christmas party. And, Again, sounds of the season didn't happen. So uh, some of the uh, additions that have happened to some of the complexes, City, Paul, City Park ball fields got uh, some new lighting due to some storm damage. Um, part of the uh, um, 11th Street project, Taylor Park got a new parking lot uh, by the Spirit League. And then the BMX people out at uh, Taylor Park Raceway uh, did quite a few additions to their uh, their facility and they're listed right there. They've been, they were the original um, original group to go out there and they've done a lot of improvements since then, mostly on their own. And unfortunately it seems to be with the sports organizations, that's how things get done is they have to do a lot on their own. The city helps when they can. So, um, you know, things are starting to work a little more normally now. Um, the rest of that is some ideas for the future, and it just points out some of the things I've seen in the media recently from some of our uh, city councilmen discussing it, Councilman Gilwin, Wooten, uh, needs for uh, 
sports complex, community center. Um, these are all just wish list items here, and you can see there's quite a few. Um, basically, um, there's a lot of things we could do if, if we did have some upgraded or better facilities, uh, obviously. Uh, one of the things, I've been on the park board for over 20 years now, and one of the things that, that has become clear to me, uh, although we've made efforts to try to get new facilities uh, through different means, um, is that, um, you know, we just, we don't do a good job of taking care of what we have. Last year, I started getting out in the park and walking a lot to get out. And, you know, you can see it if you go out there now, the, the crowd, there are just crowds out there. People love getting out. They love our space. Um, I, uh, every time I went by, there was somebody playing tennis or whatever. I decided to I'd try to pick it up a couple of years post shoulder surgery. And I was just appalled at the shape of the courts at, at City Park and at Kimball. But people are out there playing. It's been picking up. Um, I actually uh, asked the Parks Department to find out what it would cost to, to fix those tennis courts. And believe it or not, um, for all six courts in both parks was somewhere around $59,000. And it wasn't just to fix the courts, it was to relayer them, restripe them, fix all the drainage around them, and on top of that, stripe them up for pickleball, one of the biggest sports going right now, you know, and yet nothing ever happened with that. We're still in the same boat. Uh, we tried to push it through to see if uh, the city could find some money to help do that. Uh, I don't think that was a huge ask. I, I don't know what the budget was like. Everything was pretty uncertain. I understand that. We came out fairly well, thank goodness. Uh, it's just an example of some of the facilities we have that are just the run down, like the, the community center. We've done some things to it, new flooring, new entryway, new kitchen. You know, to me, that's lipstick on a pig. It's still old, it's small. You know, it's served its time. So um, I, I would love to see the city focus more on taking care of what we have so that people can use it. And, um, you know, if there is some kind of an initiative to try to grow our, our parks and our facilities, I'd definitely love to help out but we, we need to take care of what we have and not just the biggest park where we have the biggest events. So I'm open to any questions. Are we getting another splash pad? Well, there was, offer? yeah, there was a, a grant that we worked with to mm -hmm. uh, update uh, Freedom Trail Playground and add a splash pad in that area. I, I think it's kind of tied up with some federal money we're waiting on. So um, that that's in the works. But, um, it probably we, won't happen this season. Uh, we would hope we were waiting on some uh, information and some approvals um, from the Native Americans. And I think that that has happened, so we're waiting for the next process. So. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it will, they'll be able to begin construction this next fiscal year. That would be great, yeah. <clears throat> we did have to uh, convert the one splash pad we have. Uh, it was recycling, but it had a lot of issues due to the grid it was on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did convert that to a non-recycling splash pad, which means less downtime. Um, uh, that so was part better. of the problem right. was all the computer parts in there with the recycling part of it. Every time there was a, a storm, it would like the grid it was on, it would just shut it down for weeks. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we heard about that, right, Jan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the other cities that, that. that built something like that did go back to convert them to non recycling. So, and that's always been really popular. If we get another one, that'll be great. Okay. Anybody have any questions, comments? No, I was interested to hear. I, that's never made it to the top of my list, and I, I regret that on the on the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully, uh, fairly soon we can address that. And yeah, I mean, people really that. started picking it up because right. it's it's outside, it's socially distanced, <laughs> um, and then we found out that they could stripe it for pickleball too, which is just going crazy. Oh, yeah. What's so. the light situation at? Well, uh, there's there's no lights. There's lights at Kimball, um, but um, the light situation would 
add about another $150,000. That's I don't think it's really necessary with daylight savings time. There's plenty of time to get out there and play. We just need a good, safe surface to play on. Does Kimball not have lights? They have lights. Kimball, yeah. okay. Yeah, but it's, it's got one net up and the court's all laid up, so. I appreciate all the years that you've been on the park board, um, and I love all the things that the park and recreation is doing, but I'm with you. We need to work on our buildings. Definitely. Um, uh, that, that would be my ask is let's take care of what we have, and then we'll worry about what we want later. Right. So. Okay. All right. Thanks Anybody a lot. Else? Thank you so much. <coughs> okay. Madam Mayor, um, I would like to ask Sean Volk to come up. He's going to give a presentation on the fire truck lease. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor. So we're looking to <clears throat> purchase a new 2021 Pierce rescue pumper. And in doing so, we'd be replacing the truck that you have in front of you, which is a 1994 engine. Currently, it's a reserve engine. It's got 73,000 miles on it. And um, well, it's hard to tell from the picture, but it's pretty wore out. So whenever we have a truck that goes down and we have to put that in service as a frontline engine, it's just not very reliable. Um, we've been needing to replace it for a while now. And I think we came up with this Pierce Rescue Pumper is a pretty good fit for us because we would, well, we'd be surplus in this truck um, we would also be putting our current 2009 model rescue that has 52,000 miles. It would be reserve status. This uh, new rescue pumper, it meets all the NFPA standards to be an actual engine, so it can be our reserve engine, but it also has a rescue bed on it. So what it would do is it would be our first due out of Station 1 on all of our car wrecks, medical calls, and any rescue calls. And then if we have, like, engine 1 or ladder 1s, out of service for any reason or service or you know is um, getting serviced like oil changes and stuff you know they're usually out for a day or two this new truck can act as a first do out you know fire engine also so it's a pretty versatile truck for us um, when we first start talking about it I mean these trucks aren't cheap so when I met with the city manager we was trying to figure something that you know didn't hit the capital so hard all in one lump sum so we talked with Pierce about their financial solutions and this PNC equipment finance um, we kind of we liked the idea of this three-year lease because then it's a payment of three years and then it's paid for um, from my understanding this PNC equipment finance they make the prepayment so they pay the pay the truck up front and we that way we get the prepayment discount and it's twenty three thousand nine hundred sixty eight dollars of that discount and then also by ordering it before June 1st, we're gonna save another 1.5% because they're fixing up a surcharge because aluminum and metal has gone up so much. Um, if we ordered it by June 1st, the truck still won't be here. It's about a 13 month build. <coughs> so it won't, it won't count towards this year's budget. It would be on the 2022 budget. So we wouldn't receive the truck till July of 2022. So and if you guys have any questions. Is, that cutoff is June 1st, right? Yes, that, and that's just for that 1.5%. Yeah. But what is that equivalent to? I think it was about 9,000. About 9,000. 9,000? I believe so. That's a lot of money to be. You know, when we purchased the new engine two, two years ago, the, a little bit of the difference, you know, we traded in a 2009 model. This truck will try to surplus the same company we, we reached out to them. They won't even give us a bid on this truck. It's so old. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we may get fifteen, twenty thousand 20000 for it, uh, mm -hmm. just, I guess. Right. Okay. So what is it going to, what's the cost of the lease? So, I don't, do you want me to go over the lease details or? Um, so, the, the total cost of the truck is not to exceed 629000 The lease is a 
three year payments of 218 to 1990 at an interest rate of 1.86 on three years mm -hmm. how much was the interest rate 1.86 I would like to go over the city projects with you, our capital that, that uh, we have that we're taking mostly out of the revenue bond. Uh, we've got the Garth Brooks Trail. Uh, they're supposed to start construction this summer. Um, you can see some of the pictures of where that, where that will be located. Uh, the Frisco I-40 interchange, they are due to be complete by um, August of 2021 they have been moving ahead of schedule they might be a little bit early but as you can see from the photos they've um, already got the concrete done on the lanes uh, that's Frisco Road which you can see and you can see the bridge and then the other photo you can actually see uh, the bridge taken uh, from Vandeman State Highway 4, Phase 1. Um, ODOT is just finishing up their punch list. There are very few things that are left for them to do. <coughs> Excuse me. Basically, they're just doing cleanup. Uh, we will be having a ribbon cutting on June the 1st before our next city council meeting at 530. So we hope you'll be able to attend that. Um, we're very excited about the completion of this and we've already as you know we've already started uh, utility uh, relocations for phase two I drove this the other day um, I even drove it at night very seldom would I drive it at night um, and it was wonderful it is it was so wonderful to feel safe going down that road it is several people were stopped because it rides really fast Mm -hmm. So be sure you do not go over the speed limit. And is it 40? 45. 45? Because you guys are watching. <laughs> so we've also, like I said, we've started on phase two on the utility relocation. Uh, they're currently working on the water line relocation as well as uh, the sewer line relocation. We had plan to close Wagner from State Highway 4 to 11th Street this week, but with the weather uh, possibly uh, being inclement, we decided not to go ahead and close it this, this uh, week and maybe ne possibly next week. But for them, enable them to, to the construction company to do the, the work and everything, we need to have that road closed. Um, we're also working with DCP and One Gas to get um, NOG&E to get those their lines relocated, but that's moving right along. We've got to have everything done um, by July. They're going to uh, go out for bid in November, and construction will begin in 2022. Um, tonight on the uh, agenda, we have the Smart Grid. Um, we're going out for bids for the smart grid, which is the last step that we have for all of the Garth Brooks improvement. Mm -hmm. um, traffic is really moving well right now, but it will be even better when we get the smart grid in if it is approved. <coughs> there are five intersections that um, will be replaced. We will, we will be uh, going from the loop system to the smart grid system which is a camera um, recently in Ranchwood um, council member Gilliland had talked to us about making some improvements and repairs on Briarwood 
and Ranchwood Boulevard and those both of those projects have been completed on 10th Street uh, we had a pretty bad snowstorm this year and in the process our striping was damaged and and mostly removed so um, from Cornwell to Marketplace that striping will be done by Charlie's Car Wash. They are going to be um, doing that for us. Um, and the striping will change somewhat. They'll, it will handle traffic better, the, the new plan that is proposed. Uh, and then we will be doing striping from uh, the marketplace and then go west to Shedet Parkway and have that all replaced. That's all I have tonight, Madam Mayor. Cheetah Parkway. Is that the one you turn to go to? It's the one behind Lowe's. Lowe's. Okay. I just never knew what it was called. I uh, okay. Car wash. Uh huh. Yes. All right. You guys have any questions, comments? Quiet group tonight. All right. We will adjourn and meet back at seven o'clock. <laughs>